Welcome to a, another episode of the West Life Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Barnett. We are sponsored by West Ashfield Leagues, best place to watch the game live on and loud, and that will happen again on Easter Monday, and tonight we are reviewing uh, Sunday's loss to the Cronulla Sharks, but um, on the show, I've got my regular co-hosts in Rob Bashara, MG Pump Solutions' own Shane, uh, and always give us a follow at Westlife Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Support support us and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash Westlife. Um, one of our Patreon members is watching the stream in here right now. Hojo's uh, in the chat and um, yeah, getting the uh, private setting. Now, on Thursday night, we're planning to do um, this stream, send it out live through our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter if uh, the technology um, all goes goes smoothly. So aim for 8.30 Thursday night. So tonight we'll just... Um, going to be a little bit different with the format tonight. I'll get the boys... Because I've literally stepped off a plane. Um, it's 10 o'clock as we record this. I got off the plane at about 8.30. So I literally just got out of the Uber... From Sydney Airport, I've been in Melbourne for the Grand Prix. Have not seen the game, uh, apart from I think I saw the last ten minutes. So I caught, I caught um, from from what I saw, we actually won four nil. So when I tuned in, we scored a try. Um, so <laughs> it was a good game to me. It was Kemamalo one try and Sharks to none because I only caught the last ten minutes because, uh, yeah, I was watching Daniel Ricardo come six in the. Uh, Australian Grand Prix. So, um, first up, we'll go to Shane. Uh, I'm going to rely on you boys to basically run me through uh, the, what was another pretty dire game. Uh, was it worse than the Knights game, Shane? Oh, look. To be honest, to me, it was on par. Um the effort for a few of the players is there. To me, there was more players not having as much of an effort, I'd say. That sounded sound really stupid. I'm a bit tired. There was more players not making an effort. Um, to me, Brooks sort of clocked off. And then um, Paul Madden was trying as hard as he could to get us back into the game and just was making errors. Like, it was just, yeah, it was a, it was a weird game. I sort of expected it. Um, I didn't expect to win against the Sharks. Like the Sharks, their spine, they've been clicking. Um, It's just sad. Like just we have no attacking play and it's just horrible to watch. Like I'm just – like I know what the answers are, but how do we have answers or have ideas and you've got the coaching staff – set up exactly the same for the last two years. Like literally everything's exactly the same except for our defense is probably, I'd say, or definitely better than last year's defense. But attacking wise, like we watched the Panthers game straight after and straight away you could see a massive difference as they were taking on the line. Like their attack is forward. Our attacks slide sideways. If you're sliding sideways, the defence slides with you when it's literally one for one the whole way. You're never going to create an overlap. And um, it's almost like that's all that we had yesterday. Oh, yeah, it was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, that's literally Last what night, we had. Yeah, it's, yeah it was just, just sliding. Like, we were just sliding along and they were just following us the whole time. And no wonder why we couldn't get any, like, get any drives through in any of the games, really, that we've been playing. They've all been lucky, so... I don't know. It was just a, it was just a shit show, really. Like that's that's probably the best way to put it. A lot of errors. Um, Jacob Little. Oh, like I, I don't even know what to say about him. Like I don't want to see him in a Tigers jersey anymore. Mm. That is how bad he was. So. Well, important question. Know, it's, it's... Important question for you, Shane. So, how was Rob uh, as a host? So you watched the game over at Rob's. Yesterday was the uh, his hosting duties better than the uh, the players yesterday? How how was he? Ah, excellent. Ah, always good. Always good. It's good to sit down and have a chat with people who 
I guess, have the same feelings towards what's going on. Um, like sitting at home, if I, if I watched that at home, I would have either turned it off at halftime or thrown my remote to the TV. So <laughs> <laughs> to be at Rob's house, I'm not allowed to do that. So um, <laughs> it, was pro- it was probably a lot better. <laughs> and uh, Rob Bashara, uh, thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, similar thoughts to, to Shane there. Anything else to add as we get into it? And welcome. Shane summed it up pretty well. No, yeah, thank you. Uh, Shane summed, uh, summed up really well. Uh, all I'd say, if you're comparing it to the Newcastle game, I think there were just as many individual errors in the first half that were pretty simple errors that first graders shouldn't do. But I felt with the Newcastle game, we never turned it up in the second half. When I say never turned it up, as a team, we looked like we were still going all out together in the second half, where in this game, I felt like half the team were into it. Half a t- I actually saw some head dro- heads drop in the second half, and that kind of hurt me a little bit. Not I actually really felt bad for them because it's just... It's just a team that's I always thought lacked belief in winning. Now they're just lacking a lot of self belief. Um, you're going to get onto some things later with players and some of their interviews and what have you. And yeah, we'll, we'll pick up on on some of what they say there. But it's it just really hurts as a fan, you know. But um, you know what, what can you do? I guess just to all the fans out there that are upset, just remember we're turning a profit, guys. That's what it's all about. <laughs> a hint of sarcasm there. Don't worry about losses. We're, 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 we're the profit, guys. That's. I woke up this morning. I said, "My club's turning a profit." That's what I wanted since mm. I was a little boy. I didn't want to wave Rob. the flag. I didn't want my team to win. I just want to make sure my team's turning a profit. So we're going great. We're all, we're all... Remember how we were talking about Manchester United and the similarities? Yep. You just you just yep. pulled another one. <laughs> I follow the same team in rugby league and Premier League. <laughs> I don't think the West. I don't follow soccer very closely at all. Well, I don't think the West Tigers and Manchester United. I know. I think they're a little bit better than us. Oh. But um, oh, look, I think Manchester United better. were a force ten years ago, not like us. Yeah, they've yeah, won. <laughs> they've won many, many times. Yeah, Manchester United are yeah. basically the. Oh, uh, it's it's not a football Broncos. club anymore. It is literally a business. <laughs> And that's they're, they're running did. us like a business, not a football club. Mm. The Tigers are literally getting run as a business, and we're not a business. We are a football club. Yeah, we I'll... need to be successful on the ground. Can the boys finish off this Easter long weekend with a win? God knows we need it. But you can watch the team take on Parramatta Eels this Easter Monday, live and loud from the lounge or sports bar at West Ashfield, home of the West Tigers. They are proud to be able to provide ongoing support to 30 local organisations in the field of sport and arts. Uh, Step up and play at the home of West Tigers, West Ashfield, 115 Liverpool Road, Ashfield. For more information, visit West Ashfield's website at www.westashfield.com.au or give them a follow on Facebook or Instagram at West Ashfield. The thing is, the business will run. The business at the stage now that the football team we've talked about the memberships and that sort of thing. If the football team, the, the potential of this football team becomes good, we know those the fans are out there, and you can understand why many of them, um, yeah, just aren't aren't into it at the moment because it's it's depressing. So, uh, so I'm going to play a clip from Joe off in Gowie, which. Uh, a few of the guys, thanks to the guys in the, uh, I can't remember who shared it. I haven't got the Discord in front of me. But um, a few people told us that um, they liked this post-match comment from Joffa. And thanks to this little cool uh, streaming thing we've got going, I'm going to play it to you all now to have a listen to. Joffa, not the way you, you wanted it to end, uh, but they are they are a pretty good team, this Cronulla side. They are a good team. That was crap what we, we tossed up there, especially that second half. You know, we just put, put ourselves under a lot of pressure. And the teams with a good spine like them, it's going to, I don't know, it's just it's disappointing because we put a lot of hard work in and we, we say it every week, it's just not getting, not seeing any results on the, on the paddock. It must, be, it must be frustrating for all our fans, our family, sponsors, everyone at the club. It must be frustrating, it's frustrating for us, but please hang in there with us, you know, we're trying our asses off and we just need to be better. That said, mate, I mean, you fought till the end. I, I don't think you can question the effort, um, but they just seem to have far too much strike and attack. 
uh, we're just it's not good enough, mate. I, so I can sit here and say the same things every week, but we're just not good enough at the moment. You know, we work our asses off. I give us that, that training, but we're not putting in. Me included. I'm not just pointing out anyone. I'm just the whole team included. We just need to be better. Difficult with the team adjustments. You already lost Jimmy in the week. You lost Dane Laurie an hour or two before kickoff. Not an excuse, but certainly a factor. Yeah, you could say it is, but we all trained our asses together during preseason to come off those combinations. And it's next man up mentality. I thought Star he had a great. I thought we had a great game at the back. He did his best. You know, he's been training at Sinner for us, so it's a bit different. But as a club, we need to be better. That's admin. Staff, players, everyone included. Yeah, that's um, one of the best posts. <laughs> one of the best post matches I've seen. From um, that's awesome. that was the first time I've Absolutely seen that. Awesome. I was yeah, that's for, uh, I literally haven't had a chance to watch that. But um, yeah, that's that's great words from Joffa. Like there, uh, Joffa himself, Shane. You said off air he was one of our better players. Yesterday, he's obviously putting um, putting his money where his mouth is, sort of thing. There, he's, he said I, I, himself included. But do you think do you think he's part of that, or do you think he's um, he's without? Is is he pointing a few fingers without pointing his fingers, so to speak? Oh, look, I don't think so. I, I really don't think he's pointing fingers without pointing fingers. It's the fact is, we were a team. Uh, we win as a team, we lose as a team. Yes, individuals can add into that, but us as a team, we don't have cohesion. We don't. And at the end of the day, that's literally what he's saying. This next man up mentality, like that needs to get the fuck out of this club because it's been at this club for way too long. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, let's just do another run. Oh, here you go. Throw the ball and just walk it up. It's the same shit. And, um, man, like, we are talking, like, we had a laugh before. Um, Jacob Little was just so slow out of dummy half. His service was horrible. He His running was just non-existent. It was junk. Joffa grabbed the ball out of dummy half and made 15, 20-metre run. And we were, like, I straight away was just like, it looks like Joffa would be a better dummy half than Little at the moment. And, like, I'll be honest, from round one to now, Joffa hasn't missed a beat. Like, he has been playing very well. He's playing in the lock position, which, look, I don't think he's a lock. I reckon he's a prop, same as Twal. I really would rather see him in the in the forward rotation. Um, but, look, it's just, that to me, it's just brutal honesty and it's ownership for how shitty we have been on the field it's and the funny thing is he's not in the leadership group he's not one of the five yeah like we've got someone outside of this leadership group i'll call it who's been probably a better leader than any of them have been so far like the fact like oh, i don't know the fact that some of them are in there like it just blows my mind like one or two, I could, yeah, cool, like I, that's fair enough. But I'd say three of them, especially after the game. Like, look, the only reason why I don't like Peachy being in there, he's only been in the club for two seconds. Like, sorry, mate, but like that doesn't work. Ken Mamalo, he definitely shouldn't be in there. Um, after what we saw the other day, um, yesterday, just zero effort zero want there was just he didn't want to do anything it was like two times the ball went over the sideline and he just like looked at it and jogged one of them like yeah would have been stretched to get the last one but the first one he literally just like walked it over the sideline and it was just the dumbest thing i've ever seen it was the same as i'm pretty sure it was against gold coast was it gold coast titans last year where i blew up where he just let the ball just trot all over the sideline a couple of times. And it's like, what are you doing? Then he ended up scoring the winning try. I think it was a Broncos, Broncos, Shane. Broncos, sorry, Broncos. Broncos yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we were talking about yesterday. He literally had that yeah. same attitude. And then all of a sudden was just like, I'm going to play the ball, made the intercept and scored a try. 
So everyone's going to be like, oh, no, Kenny, Kenny did all right yesterday. No, he didn't. <laughs> it was fucking horrible. And the look on his face after he scored the try shows exactly how he was feeling. And that, that shit me. As soon as he scored that try, he just got up, just didn't care, uh, whatever, and just walked it off. Like, yeah, dude, it's a consolation try, but, like, just be a little happy you scored a try. Like, you've been playing absolute shit all day. Just, yeah, blows my mind. Rob Rob would will carry on from my... <laughs> yeah, Rob... My shit. <laughs> I bet, Rob, you like the part where Joffa didn't just call out players. He's gone... But he, he said admin as well. So you've obviously been critical of them in the past. And for a player to throw that in is um, pretty interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll get on to the admin later because that'll take 20 minutes. Um, the, the brutal honesty was fantastic. Um, the part that I loved the most, it was absolutely sincere and genuine. Like he was, he was hurting how we hurt when we watched the game every week. I think he, he included himself in the performance because he just don't say everyone else was shit and I'm not. Like it's like it's Shane said, it's a team thing. Um, there were individuals there that were terrible, and you know Shane can vouch for this as well. Like we, we spoke about it yesterday. We love all the players, man. Like we love the team, we love the players, but I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, Jacob Little had a great game, or I'm just going to call it as it is. If someone plays shit, it's you just played shit. Like there's nothing I can say about it. Jacob Little's. Uh, a courageous young man, like the hits he's taken, the reconstruction from the knee. I get all that. That's wonderful. That's fine. The way he played yesterday, he looked punch drunk. He looked like he'd never met his team. He was picking up the ball from dummy half and he actually couldn't pass the ball from dummy half and created a knock on. He was looking for guys behind him and passed the ball five metres behind the line of advantage. Like, like you watch Appy Coruscant last night, and you don't have to be Appy Coruscant, you just have to be a normal dummy half. If you serve the ball and give the guy a bit of a run-up or you or you engage the markers or you do something, this guy looked like he'd never played rugby league yesterday. And, you know, this is where, you know, Madge will come under scrutiny because I think Madge is putting shit up hill anyway with everything that's happened with admin. You, you, you can't be a successful coach at the Tigers under our admin. I don't care if they get Craig Bellamy. We would not be successful. The, the, the way our setup is, the way our structure is, we're, we're always behind the eight ball with stuff. You just can't succeed with this admin. So... Where the match is done right things and wrong things, I, that's up to everyone to decide. I, I don't agree with a lot of his decisions, but in terms of the type of character we want as a coach of our club, he's the right character. But I'll tell you now, if he picks Jacob Little tomorrow, I love I love to bits and I'll always love him, but I can't defend him as a, as a coach if he picks him tomorrow. He can't even be in the 17. Like he doesn't, he cannot be on the bench. And Shane and I have been crying out for a two hooker rotation. He was that bad, Josh. You, you actually need to see the game. Yeah, uh, just, I will watch it. Just quickly on the little, just, just quickly on the little individual things, you know, for the listeners, because I'm sure they all saw this as well. The first ten minutes, Cronulla kind of had the territorial advantage. We were playing between their quarter line and our quarter line, but they were mainly in our half. And our forwards are working their asses off. They've defended five tackles. Cronulla put a poor kick up, and you know, Toa drops a ball clean, like no. No pressure, no nothing. So instead of having a tackle 20 out from our own line and, and rucking it out, they're 6-0 under the post. You know, five minutes later, Noffa drops the ball, but we defended that. A few minutes later, we get down the other end. We, we bust our ass to get down the other end, and Brooks throws a forward pass on the second tackle. And when I say forward pass, Josh, you haven't seen the game. There's no one within five metres of Luke Brooks, five metres of Luciano Lailua, and the defenders are still on their line. He's just thrown it forward like, like an under sixes. It was just, you know, and then they went up the, the field the other end, like the, uh, the Cronulla winger, Muta, whatever his name is, Ronaldo. He, he put his foot on the line, so it was a disallowed try. But, like, the guys are working hard, and when they get the ball back, we, we you know, we're ready to get the ball back, and that's our turn. It's like, nah, you know what? We'll just make a zebra there and give you another chance. Cronulla was shit yesterday. Cronulla played bad. They had a lot of handling errors, but compared to us, they look great. You know, they, if they were playing on their form, they would have had 60 points yesterday. You know, we're lucky to have held them to 30. But I love that Joffa made everyone accountable because it is true. Like, and I, and I guess Joffa's frustrated with, you know, some of the team selections. I, I want to ask you guys something because, because this is what I picked up the first time I heard the interview. When Joffa said, oh, you know, like, you can't be like that when they've got halves like that, I actually took that as in him saying, too, that our halves aren't great. You know, like when you've got halves that good, it was like saying, well, we don't have that quality. 
So I don't know how you took that, you know, if you want to, if you listen back to it again, but that was the first thing I took out of I'm sure you didn't mean it, but it was like when you got halves like that, I'm thinking, well, hang on, what, you know, like what's, you wouldn't say that, it's kind of putting our own halves down. So look, there's just frustration all around, guys. And um, I, I don't know what the answer is, but, you know, in theory, we just want to rip the place up and get rid of front office and get rid of the coach and get rid of the players and do this and do that. You just can't do that. It just doesn't work like that. This is the real world. It's a business, it's a rugby league club. You can't extricate 30 players from a squad and replace them with 30 players. It just doesn't work like that. But fundamentally, wherever you stand with Madge, and Madge is losing me tactically, like he's almost there, to be honest. Um, I don't think it makes a difference who the coach is. You can't succeed at the West Tigers with a structure that we have with the board where no one can get voted on or off. You know, you've got a CEO there that just takes no accountability for anything. You know, but but what did you what do you guys think of? Did you hear that bit about the halves? You think that was a bit sort of? I was about to go you know, to Shane. I was, I was about to go to Shane because Hojo. Are you talking about what Joffa said about? It? I don't think no. Yeah, I think said. I think he was just compliment because, um, they had like their halves are playing well. I don't I don't know if it's a stab at um our halves, but Hojo did just drop in Ooh. our chat. Chain, he said Brooksy looks like he's quit or totally lost. Does it remind you a bit of Moses's last games with us? Could like do you think he's he wants out so badly that he's doing a Moses? Look, we I'm pretty sure we all know exactly how um how I feel about Brooks's last game last year. And to be 100% honest, like, I really do think he threw that game. I I believe that something's happening within the club. Now, you've, and you've normally I, got inside word on that stuff, but you haven't heard anything. This is pure guess. I actually have heard something. Okay, even better. It's from one of my mates. He, look, I'd say he told me He's about 65 to 75% sure that it's actually... Look, he said it's definitely being spoken about whether it's actually going to happen. He's about 65 70%. He mentioned that Brooks might not even be in the team this week. We've heard this before, but and that, as, as in and that he team might, list? He might, no, in the team in general. Mm. And he might be going up to Newcastle with Newcastle putting in over 550 Five. of his contract. So it's not even so, half. Look, it's, it's probably just over half of his contract, really, because he's on 900 grand. So 8, 850, 900 grand. So, look, that's, that's just what I've heard. Um, I did mention it to Rob yesterday, but look, it's... It is he, as he said, it's sixty-five percent, seventy-five percent sure, but hundred percent, it's been spoken about, and they are talk. They they're still talking with Newcastle right now. So it's basically half his contract. We're going to pay this year and next year for this year, next year. Yep. Uh, how do you feel about that, Rob? I just think it's stupid. I think we, if we were going to get rid of him, we should have got rid of him while he wanted to go because then we've got the bargaining power and we don't have to fork out as much money. By dumping him to reserve grade, which I've got no problem with in terms, you know, in terms of playing group, but by dumping him, you were saying we don't want him and therefore, you know what, you're going to have to ch chip in for more money. So, as usual, another stupid decision by the West Tigers if that comes true. And, and Josh, this is one thing that bothers me too. There'd be listeners out there saying, What's the front office got to do with you know how how our how we are on the field and stuff like that? Well, I think I think we all admit we've got a poor roster. Why have we got a poor roster? Because we had to offload five or six stupid overpaid signings from three or four years ago. It took us eighteen months to get rid of you know the the, Mac, uh, the Packers and the Madalinos and the Reynolds and the Queens and Embys and all these sort of guys. So we we actually had to fix our salary cap up. We don't have one star player in our team. We don't have one star. We don't even have like a, a, a maybe Stefano now because he's a younger player, like he, he got into that origin scene. But we really don't have anyone that we can say, wow, he's on the cusp of origin selection. So we've got this really bad roster because we had a CEO signing stupid players on stupid money and 
He doesn't get wrapped on the knuckles. He still keeps his job. You know, he, he absolutely screwed up that Robbie Farah ambassadorship where the club got fined three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. We we yeah. lost we lost nearly three hundred we we lost on our no, no, that was just a fine. On our cap, we lost three hundred and nineteen and a half thousand dollars for the years two thousand and nineteen and two thousand and twenty. So not only did we cop a fine, he screwed our cap over. And you're trying, and like I've got people on social media, not you, but people trying to tell me if we had a different coach, things would be different. Mate, we don't take accountability. The guy's got to go. The guy doesn't know what he's doing. Just because he's out of the football side now, you want to know why we're in a mess on the field, why we've got a guy like Luke Garner busting his ass in the centres, who's not a centre, he's a second row. He was probably our best player yesterday, to be brutally honest. We've got no centres. We don't have any depth. We've got no money. We've got no anything. We're, we're an absolute shit feeder club. And, and these guys on the board... And, you know, no, no disrespect because, you know, we've got bloody West Ashfield sponsoring us, but they don't want us to sugarcoat anyway. I'm not saying every individual is doing the wrong thing. But, you know, if me, you and Shane were sitting down and saying, hey, guys, there's only two people listening to this podcast instead of 3,000, you'd say, hang on, what are we doing wrong? These guys don't even look at each other and say, what can we do differently? How can we set up a new structure on the board? How do, you know, like people like me and you and other people, we all want to get on the board. We want to make changes. We, there's no hope. There's absolutely zero hope. We're doing the same thing year after year after year with no success. And we expect it to get better. And Madge is meant to be a superhero, you know, playing a second row in the centres. Like, you know, he's got to take a bit of blame for some of the signings, like Joey Leilua and all that sort of thing. But he's inherited shit. And it takes a while to fix it up. And... I don't know, man. I just, I just think our, our DNA as West Tigers is when shit hits a fan, sack people, get rid of people, change, 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 change. Maguire's the one guy that's got grit. He's got character. He might look tactically. I don't agree with him, but as, as a person, he's exactly what we need at the club. But does he, you know, if he, like I said, if he picks Jacob Little again, well then he's lost me. Period. He can be the nicest guy in the world, but. Don't, I'm sick of people trying to tell me what's it got to do with the footy field. You know, Maguire can't coach. We've already got nine or ten blokes out. We had we had a second hour in the centres. We had a bloke who didn't drop a ball two weeks ago against the Warriors, let in our first try because he went to fullback. You know, we had a bloke out because of COVID. We had a hooker that just looked like he didn't know what the hell he was doing. We, we, we're just an embarrassment, Josh. And, and I, I'm telling you, mate, it starts from the top. If everything was in order a few years ago, we'd have a better roster now. We, we, we're going to have to go through this, whether people like it or not. But, but you know, if you get Craig Bellamy or Wayne Bennett or, you know, Trent Robinson or whatever, there is no coach that is going to succeed at this club, guys, until that structure of the board or the CEO or members of that board or something changes. Because right now, if we had the smartest mind in the world to get on that board, they can't get on there. How, how, did, how is that good for our club? Sorry for the rant. No, don't be sorry, Rob. That's... Uh... The, uh, what people love love to hear, and I'm sure there's a lot of people nodding um, along as they they listen to that. So, getting back to Brooksy, uh, Shane, you were saying off air that you're hearing that Jock Madden, um, like obviously came out that he was, uh, he's obviously looking for a contract for next year, but you've heard that um, he's pretty keen, pretty keen to stay. Yeah, well, you got to think we brought him down. We've put a lot of... like he, he loves the club. And to be honest, by the way he's playing, you can tell he loves the club. Brooks, on the other hand, the other half, I don't know. I think he needs change too. Yeah. Well, look, to me, to me, he doesn't... He does not care. He doesn't want to be there. Um, Madden had enthusiasm. Like... Look, you got to think Brooks gets everything thrown at him. But as a halfback, you're running the team, and look at our attack. Like you got to you got to think of it this way: if oh, Cooper Cronk was doing the same stuff and copying the same slack, like. What, what do you think he'll do? You know what I mean? Like, at, at the end of the day, like, yeah, he's been getting pumped. But if Cooper Cronk was not successful for nine years at Melbourne Storm, do you really think they would have kept him for nine years? 
Or do you reckon they would have shit canned him after a year, two years, and go, you know what? Like, look at Kyle Flanagan and the Roosters. Perfect yeah. example. They made tough decisions. They they have to, mm. and, and instead we sit there and go, oh, Brooks is a junior. Yeah, we have to keep him. Like, sorry, but no, we don't have to keep anybody. And if they're not good enough, they're not good enough. Like, to me, Madden wants to be there. Look, he's very green. He's what? That's his seventh game now. But he was making mistakes yesterday because he was trying to put us ahead, hmm. trying to put us through. That's, he was just literally, he was busting his ass because you can tell he just loves the club. He wants to be there. He wants to be playing first grade footy. And I'll be 100% honest, he completely deserves it over Brooks at the moment. Well, obviously, Jackson Hastings is due back um, Monday. Rob, is it? Hastings, Hastings and Madden in the house for you? It, it's going to have to be, mate. I mean, if, if Madden wants to keep his job, he just can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm. Look, could could Brooks be better if Hastings was there? Yes, but you know, it ain't going to happen. I don't know what Madge is going to do. I'm, I'm sure some of these listeners are, are listening after the team's been named, so we don't know where they stand with it. Uh, what, on what Shane said about Jock Madden, I thought Jock was outstanding yesterday. He was like he's the one like out of our two halves, he's the one half that literally occasionally will go right into that line and straighten it up and absolutely go for that car accident hit. Like he knows he's about to get smashed, but that's how you draw those guys in. He straightens the attack up and, and holds the defenders where Brooksy's still doing that sideways shit, you know, what wasn't really taking it to the line and, and people wonder why we can't run a simple block play. So uh, and you know another thing. I mean, I mean, Josh Jock Madden was um, he did chip over the top with like twenty five meters out from his own line when the game was gone. Like he was just trying everything. He, he got into dummy half. Me and Shane were laughing about it. He must have got into dummy half six or seven times because Jacob Little was still at bloody Campbelltown, mate. Seriously, like Jacob Little just couldn't keep up with the play, and Jock Madden would get in and take dummy half or take a little scoot. Like in terms of his effort, I couldn't fault it, and. I'd rather I'd rather stick with Josh uh, Jock Madden, and if it fails, it fails. Like you just got to give him a go. I, I think yeah. he needs to run the ship. But ultimately, I feel I feel Hastings is more suited to us at lock if Brooks could pull his finger out and play. But you know, the the game management side of things has to go to Jock now. We just with Brooks will never be a game manager. I don't care what club he goes to, whatever. If they're giving the role, it's going to be a secondary role. He's not a game manager. End of story. And like I say, I love all these guys, but I'm not going to say, yeah, Brooksy, you're a great player. Someone say you're a great player because you just got to call it as you see it. And to be honest, I actually hope they're not listening. I hope no one listens to this out of, out of the players and their families. Because, you know, I don't want to bag people for the sake of bagging it. But, you know, we're, we're a frustrated, you know, uh, fan group and something's got to give. And if I actually feel like our forwards, with the exception of the dummy half, our forwards are busting their ass, and then, you know, the, the, the wingers and the fullbacks are dropping simple balls or, or silly forward passes or incorrect play the ball or something like that, and, and you just see their heads drop. They're like, man, we just worked hard for five tackles. Can't you catch a freaking ball? Can't you pass the ball backwards? Like, it's, 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 I don't expect an under-six side to do some of the mistakes I saw yesterday. So it wouldn't matter who the coach is. If they're working hard at training, why aren't they producing it on the field? Because at the end of the day... Our fans don't give a flying what they're doing at training, what they're doing after hours. They're judged on the 80 minutes on the field. So, you know, and that's everyone. But I say to you, like, in, in regards to the coach and the roster and everything like that, a lot of it still comes from up top because we'd have a better roster if up top knew what they were, they were doing as well. So we, we just gotta we just got to put up with a bit of it. And I actually feel like Mad is one big loss away from getting fired. And I, I said that on the pod a few weeks ago. I said, we'll, we'll probably cop one big loss, but if we get a second loss, he'll be gone. I, I don't think it'll achieve anything. Mm. But I guess from an outsider's point of view, Josh and Shane, I think, you know, just the fans want that fresh look. You know, they want just like, oh, we've got a new coach now or a new CEO or a new something. And there, there's a bit of hope. But right now, to everyone, it feels like there's no hope. And, and that's the part that hurts, man, because me and Shane just sat there yesterday and it was just like, you knew after 20 minutes, you know, how much is this going to be by? Like, and we're just sitting there and we're not even getting, you know, occasionally I think I had a bit of Tourette's, didn't I, Shane? But, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, 
you know, I, I just lose my shit, <laughs> lose my shit with a few swear words. I'm like, sorry, mate, because I'm trying to be cool in front of Shane. I couldn't be cool. I was like, man, I was a, I was a muffled tiger. Like, I wanted to let rip. So it's it's just frustrating. It's so frustrating. It's frustrating. Like, look, I've seen a premiership. It's fine, but some of you, you know, the the younger kids that have grown up as West Tigers fans that haven't even seen semi finals. Like, if you're ten years of age, you haven't been to a semi final yet. Mm. You know, and 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 it's not going to change tomorrow or next year, but. You'd want to you want to think that there's a plan in place so we're there in two or three years, and and I think they're trying to put a plan in place. But honestly, I got zero faith in the board as a whole. I'm not going to single out the individual members on the board because I don't know what they do. I don't know who brings in sponsorship, who's in relation to football, who's this. But if they were fair income, all those board members, they need to sit down with each other and say, guys, okay, we all love the place. I know we got you know like West Ashfield. It's a little bit different because it's not totally about rugby league. But we've got to do something different if we want this place to succeed. Otherwise, just get rid of the club, mate. Like, I don't don't even go to Perth. Just fold. Just get rid of this team because we're a waste of time. We're, we're an absolute feeder club. And we're never going to be successful if the same people are sitting in their bubble, tapping each other on the back, saying we're doing great. Oh, you know, we're turning a profit. Imagine what sort of profit we would have turned if we didn't have a $375,000 fine or we could have picked up a couple of players for three hundred and twenty grand a couple of years ago. No wonder Corey Thompson, picked, they said, see you later. You know, got like, I'm not saying Corey Thompson's the be-all and end-all, but when he asked for a release, they probably said, you beauty, because we're, we're short of money. We, we've got pro- salary cap problems. So for 2020, so they let him go. There's one player less they've got to worry about. You, you, can't, you can't be a coach and be a, su- a successful person at the West Tigers. And it's been like that, even with that ruthless tyrant Taylor, with Potter, with you know, I don't know how we won premiership, guys. It's it's one of the greatest, greatest flukes in history, and thank God we had it because I don't think I'm going to see a premiership in my lifetime again. And I'm being genuinely honest. I, I don't see, I don't see any hope under our current administration. If they love the club, if they love the fans, they've got to understand changes have to be made. You can't have guys on that board for 35 years or 10 years. Literally, the only way you get off that board is if you resign or if you die. You cannot get voted off. It's, it's, I don't know of any other board like it in the other NRL teams. It's, it's just, oh, guys, seriously. I, I, I why, wanna, why are we supporting this team? I want to go back to the, the Brooks mail that Chains had because I think it's a, a huge, huge call. So, yes or no, boys? So, assuming the Knights paying half, do you pull that trigger, Shane? Yes. Rob? I I believe it should have been at the beginning of the season, but... Well, yeah. especially if they're going to chip in fucking all of it. But, Rob, would you pull that trigger? I know I, you... I'd I know, pull yeah. that trigger 100%, 100% now, only for the reason that I know we can't make finals. Like, we're 0-5 about yeah. to go to definitely 0-6. So if there was a chance of, you know, if we're like two and four or something like that, two and three, yeah, like you just don't get rid of, at the end of the day, he can still play, you find a role for him, but don't let him run your team. And, you know, while while we were, while I was talking, I was just realising, with the exception of Adam Dwayhe, I just realised, I reckon that the other four captains are basically the oldest guys in our club, aren't they? When you think about it, Tamo, yeah, it's Tamo, Mamalo, Peachy. Like, there's really like Brooksy. Like, there's really, except for Adam Dwayne, I think all those four guys are just about to be the oldest. Like, we're, most of our team are quite young. Yeah, and I guess Maybe, that's why. I they... don't know. Noffert, not, would not. What, what, how old? How old's Noffert? Twenty six or something? Like, I just don't. Yeah, no, that's probably a bit what old, I was captain, but is he a bit older? But yeah. I think so. I, can I don't know, guys. It's, it's very, it's it's very frustration. 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 There you go. How am I going tonight? It's very frustrating, but you know we like, we can't just get rid of everyone all in one go. You you still got to have the place run somehow. But you know I, I know how this all pans out, guys. Because whenever whenever Teflon Pasco has the heat put on him, okay, he he pushes someone you know in front of a car like he did Adam Hardigan last year. So I guarantee you guys, Matt will be gone within a couple of weeks. I absolutely guarantee it. Because every time that he goes on front office, someone else becomes a sacrificial victim. And, and it's a pity that the one bloke with character, you know, in, in that club is going to get sacked. Even, even if you think he's a shit coach, and I'll accept that. If he's a shit coach, he's a shit coach, okay? But he, he's, a, he's a man of his word. He never bags his players publicly. He, he knows everything that we need to be about as Tiger people, as Tiger players. 
I have seen a lot of effort this year. I really have, except for last weekend. Well, there was some effort last weekend, but the previous rounds, I think there's been effort in every game. Mm. You can tell from Joffa that they are busting their asses at training. So, you know, we, we used to be picked on because we used to want to win 38, 36 and all this sort of thing. When Jason Taylor came along, he goes, you know, we're not tough enough. We need to be able to get in the grind and tackle and do this and do that. We're finally starting to do that because I, I think, the West Tigers side of yesterday would have had 60 points put on him yesterday. And somehow it, it was 30 to 4. But, you know, he still has to be better. Like, if Nathan Kalis is the defensive coach and Madge, Madge can't just wash his hands with it. Like, Ollie Gildart has to learn how to bloody read a block play. Like, Ollie Gildart literally leaves a hole every time someone runs a block play. It, it, was, it was ridiculous yesterday watching that. You know, when you see our attack, as Shane said, we're running sideways. As soon as Jock takes the ball into the line straight, or Brooks, well, as soon as they start straightening up, you can see you've frozen their line a bit and you can get something working. But I guess yesterday we lost Dane Laurie and we had our right centre go to fullback and our reserve go to, you know, centre. So you're never going to score a try with Garner on the right centre. Like, no offence to Garner, but he did his job. He tackled the biggest unit going around that's been in unbelievable form, Talakai. Like, Talakai didn't score a try, so he did a pretty good job on mm. But we, we just don't have the troops, guys. Like, t- tell me if Bellamy was there yesterday, what would the, why would the score have been different? But this, this is what I'm getting at. And, and the reason we've got a shit squad is because of everything from up top, guys. You can't just say, oh, you know, he should have caught the ball and he should have tackled and he should have done this. We, we, we don't have a great squad. It, it's as simple as that. You just can't put it down to players. Everything's on the players. Oh, what's the coach doing? He's not making them better, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they, they're not good enough. Maybe we've got to have a year or two of suffering so we can get you... Papaliti's and your Coruscant's and a few other guys and Dwayne, we're going to look so good when Dwayne gets back. You know, I don't think Noff so. will score a try till Dwayne gets back. Seriously, Noff is going to get pneumonia out there. Like, <laughs> he, he hasn't seen, he, like, Jimmy Roberts never passes the ball and, you know, he doesn't get that face ball that he used to get from Dwayne. Like, poor Noff, he's never going to score a try. Mm. It's just, we're just going to have to accept it as fans, but if one fan tells me, oh, you know, this coach should be making him better, you, you go coach Jacob Little. Go coach what he did yesterday. Tell me, tell me that they told Jacob Little to run around like a chook without a head yesterday. Seriously, that was embarrassing. That's absolutely embarrassing. And no, I don't want him to play for the club again. It's nothing personal. He's just absolutely hopeless. Absolutely hopeless. We, if we'd have had Coruscant yesterday, we wouldn't have lost by much. As bad as everything else was. We just missed a dummy half that knew what he was doing. Seriously. And some people are defending the bloke. Unbelievable, man. Shane, I don't know what they're watching. Shane, where do you sit on the coaching front? Um, a, do you think do you think Madge has is it like basically uh, one more one more big loss as Rob says? Do you and do do you think we need to change coaching wise? And also, as of course Rob's going on um, about the the board, that like basically the top down. So. Structure-wise, outside of the players, what changes do you think need to be made? Look, I, I'm i at a point now where I think tactically Madge isn't cutting it. His, the way he's playing Seyfarth is just mind-blowing. Like He had like a barely a blade of grass on him yesterday. Tuolangi came off. He played while Tuolangi went off for a head knock. So that's 15 minutes. And then we didn't see him for the rest of the game. So, like, why, why was he there? He's a forward. Use him in the forward rotation. Just things like that. And to be honest, if he, like, as Rob said, if he picks little tomorrow, that's me done with match. That's me finished. Yeah, me too. Yeah. If, if I see little and in I'm that team... <laughs> Like, I'm talking, if I see Little, even as the 18th man, like, I'm fucking done. Because he should not be anywhere near this team at the moment. Like, yeah. if Simkin isn't starting, like, it's my mind's going to be fucking blown. How was Simkin yesterday? Didn't, he didn't play. play. Didn't he? He's oh. 18th man. No. I thought he got called no. into the squad. God, I sound no, he he got, he got, I think he got called into, I think he was 18th man. So, it, so, if so Lids to, played 80 minutes. So if to a Lungy, Lids played, uh, played 80 minutes 
yes, I'm pretty sure I didn't see him come off. I didn't notice him for quite a bit of it because he was just sitting there struggling at the back back of the pack. He was. I've never. I've guess, never seen. I've never seen a worse game. Seriously, I've never seen a worse game from a hooker. It was. It was beyond embarrassing. Please don't. Be like, I hope he's not listening because I, I don't want him to do anything to himself. It, he just, he'd harm himself if he knew how bad we fucking hated his performance yesterday, man. It was so bad. Oh, to be honest, like it's it's the worst performance I've seen from any any player this year of that we have. It, it was horrible, but just like what I, I don't even know, like what what Madge is thinking anymore. I'm I'm looking at the bench. The bench doesn't make sense to us. We've mentioned this quite a few times. Both Rob and I yep. have agreed with the dual hooker. You you need two hookers in this day and age. Yep. Run Peachy as a lock. Just leave him there. Put Joffa on the bench and run three big forwards on the bench and just have Peachy running around lock all the time. And actually do. If like for Twile, he can play 80 minutes. He can. He just he doesn't run hard, but you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna stop people. So just leave him there and just let him sit there and defend. Have the other three as we just a split to- and just keep rotating it. Are we allowed to bring uh, Ruler up into the first grade squad now, or is that is that no, not allowed? Uh, I think not yet. after a certain nah, date. for next year. No, nah, he's not okay. development. Oh, he's 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 not a development. Yeah, nah. Okay, we've signed him for next year. He's not a development player. So we've got Ruler. So he can play other positions other than the hooker too. Because I'm just thinking. Um, well, he plays lock. Yeah, so fucking good at lock. He can too. play lock. That's what I'm saying. That's why you'd I'd have him. I'd get Jakey to play, and then if Jake needs a rest, you put him on for a little bit. But he can also back up as a just a running forward. Yeah, right. So, and well, and then we've just the next got to year, do something, guys. Like Appy comes in. But you, you, you know, like like I say, we always pick on you know the like we're picking tonight on obviously Little and Brooks, etc. And I've mentioned Gilda. Now, if we had any other centres, that's no disrespect to Luke Garner because Luke Garner tackled his ass off, but he's not a centre. If we had anyone that could play right centre, he'd be a he'd be playing first grade. If we had anyone that could play left centre, Gildart would be getting dropped too. So this is Madge's problem. Madge, Madge has to keep picking the same guys that aren't up to it. But, you know, to the other point, well, we're saying, we're looking at Madge now saying, Madge, okay, why can't he read a block play? What are you guys working on a training? How come he leaves a hole every time? I think the funniest thing was Mamalo's intercept, Josh, came about because the Cronulla players were two on two, just on, on their side of halfway, and the Cronulla player got around Gildart. So it basically became a two-on-one. And then Kenny just went for the intercept. Otherwise, they would have been streaking down the other end another 50 metres. Uh, Actually, you know what I that, find funny? He, he's, what's that? You know what I find really funny? Rua got announced this week that he's going to be top 30 next year. Yep. Daniel Talentire put up a thing on Twitter about how We've now got three hook, uh, four hookers in the four top four rotation, or top thirty. So we've got four hookers on rotation. To me, yeah, for next year. So, for next year, yeah, yeah. Sign that's it for next year for 2023, 2024. What that tells me is they want little gone, and him coming out and putting out that performance has. <laughs> That's, that, that was the final nail in the coffin, I really do believe. Because if they've signed a young fella to come up and then he played like that, I reckon the coffin door was already sliding shut, man, and that was just the hammer. Boom. See you later. So, look, he'll probably get a bit of game time this year, but no, nah, I think I think he'll be gone. I really don't think we'll be seeing Little next year. We'll piss See, him off to the they, they were both on the outer, but I think... That poor performance by Little brings Simkin back into it. It really does. It gives it gives Simkin a chance to sort of nail down that second hooker spot. He's under contract so, next year too. You know, so, who yeah. would, would again looking at paying people? Well, do you got do, do, okay? Do, do we want to discuss who we who we name for tomorrow night's team? Yeah, go for it, Shane. I'd def- in the hooker, I'd definitely have Simkin starting. Little, he needs a stint in reserve grade. Um, I, as silly as this sounds, if Brooks does get announced, like if if Brooks isn't going to Newcastle, which there's obviously a chance he's not, 
there's probably more chance he's not than he is. Like, that's how I feel anyway. Um, I would say it would be Jock Madden, six, Luke Brooks, seven, Jackson Hastings, 13. I really think they're going to try to give that a go because they need something to spark. So you're saying I'll stick with Brooks? I, if he doesn't get sold, yeah. And as, as much as it pisses me off, I do think Madge is this tactically stupid because of the teams we've already seen. Hodjo in the chat is just suggesting that Brooks at nine, um, which a lot of people have thrown about. Rob, could you... I think we've talked about this a little bit before, but um, do you think Brooksy could be a nine? Well, that, I didn't actually read the chat. Black Islander stole my thunder. Not to put him at nine, I, I would start Simkin at nine and I would put Brooks on the bench. if they, Because if you put Brooks on the bench, at least you're appeasing the Brooks haters to say, you know what, thank God they finally dropped him, they've woken him up. But if, if Simkin needs a stint, well, then he can go into dummy half. If one of the other boys needs a stint, he can go into the half. So it's not it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, we, we don't have enough depth there to say, Brooksy, you're gone, and bring someone else in. That That's the problem we've got. So assuming everyone's available, like your Dane Lorries and your James Roberts and all that, I think the back line would be what we call, uh, our one to five would be the full strength lineup. Um, but yeah, I, I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind seeing Hastings in the halves with Jock and maybe Peachy at, at 13, but I, I know Madge won't do that. It's just... And I'm not saying it's the right way to go because in a perfect world, I'd love to see Jacko at 13 as well. So it just depends who he picks at 6 and 7. Once I know he's, where he's going with 6 and 7, then you can work out who you're going to put at 13. But um, definitely Jackson Hastings has to take more control of the game, as does Jock Madden. So I, I just feel like the, the reins are going to be taken away from Brooksy one way or another. And the best way to take the reins away from him is don't have him start. Just have him on, you know, have him on the bench at, at very best. Uh, the forward pack, obviously Joffa would go into the forward rotation. Garner's been one of our best players the last couple of weeks. But unless he's starting, you don't get in the 17. It's as simple as that. You've got to have the big boppers on the bench. Maybe utility, but you don't have second rowers on the bench. So he either starts, which he's not going to start. He's not going to get a place in front of uh, Lay Lua and Tuolangi. So Garner, for me, has to go totally. But, you know, if Roberts is still injured or something like that, we're going to have, you know, a pot plant in the centres again. Because we just have no... By having Luke Garner in the centres, we have no attack. Sure, he'll he'll tackle and do the best he can, and, and, he, and he's busted his ass. I, I actually love the bloke. I'm proud of how he's tackled because that's the one thing we always said... Luke Garner can do is tackle, and he's tackled his ass off the last two weeks, out of position as well. So you know, it's it's. I think it's just about the makeup of the team. It's not about the individuals. Is Luke Garner in our best seventeen players? Hundred percent, he is, but he doesn't fit right now. Uh, and that's the other thing too. If we are losing a couple of players and we're zero and five, why are we persisting with guys that we're losing anyway? Are we going to keep him? Make him a better player? Give him the first great time? There's just a lot of questions that need to be answered. And I'd love to know what Madge and, you know, uh, Gardner and Kalis and what they're all discussing with each other. Like, I mean, I guess they don't, they can't, they don't really have much to choose from, but you've got to get your forward bench rotation right. And as Shane said, what's going on with safe half? It's almost like that every week now that he gets minimal minutes. He had three or four minutes in one of the other games. He only came on with two minutes left for Lay Lure against the Gold Coast. And then there was another week he only had less than 20 minutes. And I think Garner had one of those nights as well where he had less than a few minutes. So we're, we're not really using our bench properly. And I, I don't want to manage and ask those questions. Like, hey, what's going on? Tell us your logic. Why are you keeping these guys? Are you just keeping them fresh for the sake of it? It's like playing a 15-man game. You mentioned Brooks on the bench there. Do you guys remember, so in 2020, he got benched for... Uh, f- three games. The Brisbane game. Yeah, 48-0 yeah. against the Broncos. Uh, and then we lost to Parra. Yeah, Billy Walters started that day with Benji. Yep. So it's been tried um, in the past. Brooks off the bench, does that do anything for you, Shane? Look, to be honest, we need to... 
we need to give anything a crack at the moment. Like, I, there's I, two games we definitely should have won. I, I think it needs we need a massive shake up because, as Joffa said in his um, post game, that's what they had the whole preseason for to make combinations. And what the fuck combinations are we seeing? Like, let's be honest. They're a team of individuals. And as Joffa said, it's that next man up mentality. Okay, well, I couldn't go through them, so you give it a go. And that's just the bullshit that we keep getting fed. And it's just like, well, fuck, man. Like, Hastings had combos with people, and he'd been there for just one preseason. You could see that he was playing well with the team, straightening things up. He'd work. People would know what he's going to do. With Brooks, Brooks doesn't even fucking know what he's going to do. Just looks lost. Like, yesterday, that second half, he was fucking done. And the fact that there's now articles coming out with other ex-players going, yeah, Brooks has quit. Like, that doesn't happen. They, they're usually like, yeah, they're the Bush, like they're the Brooks bashers, but they'll just be like, oh man, he's playing shit. They're seeing now what we see. And I've seen it for the last few games. He just doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't, he just doesn't care. And I think that's what shits me so much that we're, relying on someone who doesn't give a fuck. And people go, like, you can have Madge and all those guys come out as much as you want. Oh, nah, Brooks loves his club. Brooks, he, he loves his club. He's a clubman. Fuck off. If he loves his club, he'll be playing like he loves his club. He is not playing like he loves his club. He doesn't give a fuck. He's checked out and he wants to go. Uh, we know that he's asked to go and they still didn't let him go. So, like, yeah, look, I understand Adam being injured. That's probably the main reason why. But to be honest, like, I think I'm just fed up with it. Boys, any other... Uh... Well, he's not going he, he, to be on, you know, 900K being off the bench as well. So by putting him on the bench, you're still advertising him or shopping him around to the rest of the league to sort of showcase what he can do when he comes on the field. But, you know, ultimately, if we've got Hastings and Madden in the halves, I know that's two blokes that are going to take the ball right to the line and draw that man in and take a hit for the benefit of their team. I, I don't see Brooks doing that at the moment. And, you know, Brooks can look so good when he runs the ball straight, but when he starts running the ball in circles and going around. And to be fair, he, does, he, he had a few teammates that didn't look interested yesterday. Um, you know, it, we, we, we seem to... When things are going against us, we lose whatever structure we're meant to have because sometimes we don't look like we've got a structure. But we just there were some moments in the second half yesterday, it was literally like, what are we going to do on the next play? That's that's how bad it looked. And and I actually just felt I just felt like a lot of the forwards were even dropping their heads because you know my analogy with the team is the team's like a car and, and your halves are the steering wheel. And if your steering wheel's not working, man, it doesn't matter how good everything else goes, how good your engine is, how anything is. If you're not getting directed around the park properly, you're screwed. And we had a dummy half that was useless. He's the first bloke that touches the ball for our team. Absolutely useless. And then Brooks, he's the next guy that touches the ball the most. I, th I think Jock tried his harder. And I, I really, I'm, I actually think he's one of our better players, to be honest. And he, his effort was there. His running was there. His enthusiasm was there. So let's just give him a go. Let's just see, let him have the steering wheel and just say to Brooks, you know what? It's no offence, man. You, you still be in the team. Just come off the bench and give us a bit of spark. I'll save the um, the 3-2-1 because I, I obviously haven't watched the game yet. So I'll give it a rewatch uh, this week and maybe on our show Thursday night, um, which we're hoping... To, well, which we're planning to do live. So, as we said at the top of the show, um, around eight thirty ish, we'll go live on the uh, the outlets: YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, boys, is, is there anything a little bit of a shorter one in terms of our uh, normal average? But um, anything, anything else from yesterday's game before we 
um, move forward and then on Thursday night open it up to the public? No, nothing for me. I've pretty much said everything I want to say. Um, <laughs> throw who I want under the bus. So, Rob, any anything else that we haven't we haven't touched on from this game? Not not really anything different, other than the fact that I just want everyone to understand out there that no matter what's going on with the coach and the players, you cannot succeed without a front office that knows what they're doing. And it's time for front office to just look at themselves and say, for the betterment of the club, even if the individuals stay there, we've got to change the structure. We've got to put in a voting system. We've got to be able to change board members. We have to do something. But I, I think the problem is we've never taken accountability for anything bad we've done. And we've had a CEO that's cost us a million dollars, put us behind the eight ball. And the reason we've got to ship a roster is because of the CEO that signed all those players. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm on a mission for this bloke to get out of there. Of course, we're never going to succeed with Justin Pascoe as CEO. And people need to understand that the board and CEO do reflect on the field. And, you know, like I said the other week, Madge couldn't even get Dwayhe and bloody uh, Jackson Hastings to get an airfare up to freaking Gold Coast, trying to build some camaraderie, trying to get the guys he knows are leaders of the group, trying to get the team together. We wouldn't even spend a couple of hundred bucks to get him up there, and that's the sort of shit that Madge has to put up with. Unfortunately, I know Madge is going to be the scapegoat, and and it is what it is. But Madge is going to hang himself by his selections tomorrow night, so he really needs to think long and hard about who he picks. And if he sticks with them, well, he's just, you know, like the Titanic, maybe he's going to go down with it because you just can't keep sticking with the same blokes that are in key positions. Little is a 100% must go. Brooks, I would say, is a 65% must go if he wants to to get the fans back on side with him and say, you know what, this guy's learning his lesson. If they're both there tomorrow night, he'll be gone next week. Righto, so yeah, moving forward to the Thursday night. A good, nice summary there too, Rob. Um, so Thursday night, if you want to take part in our... I haven't called it the vent pod yet, but I think it's kind of going that way. But we want to have um, a variety rather than people coming on and saying the same old thing so the way we're going to do it is send us we've already had a few i put it out on the socials and we've already been inundated with um some pretty cool ideas and uh topics and things that people want to get off their chest so dm us on twitter facebook or send us an email at podcast at westlife.com the way it'll work is um yeah the boys and i will Choose the best ones. We'll send you a link, and you basically you can use your phone or computer, and we add you to our um, to the to our room, which um, yeah, which our little stream room. And thanks to Kenny and Hojo from the Discord, from the Patreon guys, um, tuning in for that one. A little bit of a shorter one tonight. Um, as I said at the top of the show, I'm fresh off the uh, off the plane. Not fresh. I stink. I need a shower and um, get the stink. <laughs> the team stinks. I stink. Uh, life stinks. But um, as always, boys, not not a great way to finish. But I will finish with thanks to all our fans um, in our community. We had a couple of new patrons join this week. We're getting bigger and better. Um, the club's not, but um, yeah, we're we're gaining a lot of support and a lot of a great little community and uh without that man i don't boys i don't know what um what our lives would be like following this team and having you boys and having um yeah all our uh yeah mates and that we've made through the club it's it just tears us apart because it's it's literally our life or a big part of our life this uh this club and it's just killing us and just so depressing and ruining our weekend. Um, it didn't ruin mine because I avoided it. I was, yeah, obviously uh, had my mind elsewhere and probably was thankful that my internet did suck because I did try to tune in to get a radio or something as I was watching the Formula 1 at Albert Park where the internet connection was just uh, awful. Obviously, 120,000 people were trying to upload to Instagram at the same time. It um, was very slow. But thanks to everyone for tuning in this week no matter how shit they are they are boys as always go the tigers 
Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. As always, we are sponsored by West Ashfield Leagues Club and as well as MG Pump Solutions. If you could please subscribe if you'd love to hear us again. We're going to have episodes every twice a week, every week this season, Mondays and Thursdays. So we're going to, as the season rolls in, uh, be sure to catch us every week. And if you can, give us a like on the socials, so at Westlife Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, search for Westlife Podcast on Facebook. And if you'd like to take part in the show, uh, patreon.com forward slash Westlife. It's just a couple of bucks a month to help grow the show. We'll see you again next time on the Westlife Podcast.